Welcome to another episode of the Conundrum Podcast. As you all know, I am a big fan of Which Witch is Which. My first introduction to the band, uh, we were opening for them at a show here in Miramichi, and I hadn't heard, um, I'd heard of the band, but I hadn't heard any of their music. So let's just say from note one, I was hooked, like game over. When Lizan started to sing, it was just, it was on, like, um, amazing band and uh she definitely puts on a show so as you might have guessed my guest this week is lisanne lombard she is a lightning bolt uh, when it comes to pure energy and power when she sings raw emotion and uh, just you know lets it all out and that's something that she brings to her art and her life uh, every day 100 percent um, she's the real deal. She's such an amazing person. Um, so I hope you all tag along and enjoy my conversation with the always entertaining Lisanne Lombard. How's it going? It's going fantastic. How you been? Pretty good, pretty good. I'm just going to pop in my earphones. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you great. Actually, your your, your audio went like 10 times better after you did that. Fuck yes, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Good. You're looking great. Oh, thanks, you too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've been jamming it all lately or? Uh, yeah, actually, Jack and myself jammed. Jack and myself, yeah, I sound so professional. Jack and I, <laughs> I can't even speak English. Um, oh. Yeah, we got together last weekend, just the two of us to uh, work on the new song arrangements. Nice. And, and we banged out like five. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Like, we work That's really That's awesome. Fast. Yeah. That's, and then, yeah. Uh, so then I record them on my phone, like the video and all that. And then mm -hmm. we have a private group that I send to the, to the band. And then Sean okay. can pick them up. So then Sean can see them like where Jack's playing and he hears the songs. And then when he comes up from Moncton, it's just like, it's like we already had a practice. Like, Okay. Oh, yeah. that's wicked. Yeah, it's yeah. nice that we live in that kind of time where like you can kind of do those things. Right? Yeah. 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 For sure. So I saw you guys had your first jam in a while. That must've <sighs> felt good. Amazing. No, I was, I'm super stoked. We're over at the Aberdeen there. So it's like, Super huge space, like yeah. great vibes and everything. Like yeah. lots of room to to stretch around and oh, big times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we were at Go Music Moncton before that, and they uh, closed. Their pandemic uh, was not good to them. So no, eh? yeah, yeah. It's a lot of spots that are shutting down because of all that, and it sucks. Yeah. Oh, I mean, big hope, time. Hopefully, when things are like starting to roll again, that that they'll be able to recuperate and, and open shop again some of them at least maybe yeah fingers crossed there for sure but i'm sure probably a lot of them are had to pay all those you know rent and heat and all that when they weren't making money so they're probably all in the hole pretty deep oh yeah and not only that just like market prices of everything everybody's property tax it's like uh, when it rains it pours right so, yeah 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 so yeah. but we'll get out of it and we're starting Absolute. to do so which is yeah good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, podcast. So basically mm. highlight super cool, awesome people from the Maritimes. And, uh, I've been wanting to have you on for a while. Oh, and, thanks. Uh, yeah, well, you know, um, <laughs> cause I had, I had Nadine, um, I think she was like episode three and then nice. Dan mid, like mid pandemic, Dan was like, what are you up to? I was like, Hey, let's have a chat. So I did awesome. that. And then, uh, so I was like, well, I can't have like you guys so close together. Cause then it'll just be like the witch, which is witch show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which not a bad thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll uh, like I said, I got to collect them all. So I'll have to get PJ on at some point too. Oh yeah. He he'll probably have the best stories out of all of us there. So <laughs> uh, maybe, I mean, he's, he's been doing it for a while. So yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So I know like you and I, like we met, the first time we met was when we played a show together here in Miramichi. Yeah. I had heard of which, which is which, but I had never actually like listened to, I hadn't heard anything from you guys. So the first time I heard you guys was live at that show. Yeah. So like 
from the first note, it was just like, bam, like, it's so cool. Oh, <laughs> thanks, man. Like you the, guys, too. It was the best way to be introduced to the sound because, like, you guys are awesome on the album, but live, it's just, it's a whole other thing, right? Like, it's the energy, it's the vibe, it's, and the performance. Much more raw. Yeah, yeah, it's more raw. And I'm like, that's, when I listen to music, I try to listen to music live as much as possible. Like I'll be mm. on YouTube watching concerts over listening to like, you know, albums and shit. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So being that we've, we've played a few shows together cause you know, six gun smoke have tried to ride your coattails as much as possible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, oh no, you guys are great. We, but, we love having you. But we, um, so we've talked in between sets and shows and stuff, but we never actually got to like, have a real deep conversation and get, get to know each other. So I'd like to, uh, to find out more about who you are, like where you come from and and all that. So um, I guess the easiest first question would be, where are you from? I'm from Moncton. I've lived here pretty much my whole life. I was over in Halifax for like four years just to do a fine arts degree. But other than that, Moncton bound all the way. Yeah. 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 Cool. Do you have like a big family, siblings or anything like that? I got like, uh, I have my sister Tara and then I have two steps of blings there. So yeah, pretty, pretty small family for the most part. Yeah. So was it like growing up, was it like a lot of like music and art always like floating around? Actually, yeah, fair amount because my neighbor growing up, uh, it was Jean Guy and Gaetan was their name and they'd always have like jams and music going on, live stuff in the basement there. And that was like every Friday, Saturday, they had a pool, just go over there. And it's like high life kind of thing. Even as a kid, it's like, you know, so it was cool. It was fun. So that was always inspiring and kind of got some juices going there and the want to kind of do that myself. So, yeah. yeah. So were you mm. always um, like in school and stuff, were you always a creative person? Like, Art wise, like more so visually, like music and stuff only came later in life where it's like I discovered karaoke and I was like, oh, fuck, yeah, this is a great time. Like, <laughs> I want to do this. And that's actually how I ended up joining Witch Witch is Witch because I'm like the third or fourth singer of the band. And yeah. they're like, yeah, we heard you do karaoke and you do it quite well. And it's like, ha, yeah, right. On. I love that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah so, like, yeah, you're the third. Um, so yeah, they had like two singers before. Um, yeah, so they had a, Katie Young. Yeah, they had like a bunch of songs before you joined the band. So coming into that, like where they already had all that stuff, like what was that like kind of, you know, jumping in the middle? Um, it's, I think it's kind of what I needed as a stepping stone to get into doing music and stuff because I kind of got to learn uh, not what was expected of me, but kind of like a rhythm or something along those lines. So it gave me an idea of how I can start writing songs or like the lyrics for the band and different things like that. Cause I only ended up writing one off the, our last album there, which was phone patrol, which I was like, just so proud. Cause I wrote a song or whatever. Now it's like, yeah. okay, whatever, but you know, it's still fun. Dig it. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Cause like, yeah. Like when you're performing, you would never know that you're singing somebody else's words. Like you've pretty much taken them. You know what I mean? Like when you're, when it's coming through you and like, you want to connect with the crowd, like you've got to feel it. Right. So if you're singing something that you don't mean or believe in, like you can kind of see it's being phoned in But Mm. like from day one, like from when I first saw you guys, I was like, like this chick's fucking got it. Like, Oh, thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And that's the thing too. Like Katie, when I'm singing Katie songs, especially, which is like hack the bone and sit and can't seem to get my, or that is the same song. But, um, I can't think of the other tune right now. I'm a little baked, <laughs> but uh, those songs there, it's just like, I just really feel what she was feeling at that time. So those ones I have an especially easy time. I feel like serving those up is I just dig the message behind it. And there's so much raw feeling behind it. And I feel like a lot of people can connect to those mm-hmm. tunes. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah they're well-crafted and like your voice, like from, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> yeah it's, it's pretty raw and powerful and like i remember i think it was the last time we played with you guys at the cavo when like the pandemic kind of they eased it up and they had that show where like 50 people or whatever it was 
Yeah. I remember we were at the merch table and I looked over at, at Jack and I was just like, I don't know how she fucking does that. Like you must <laughs> yeah. be so raw and sore at the end of it. Cause like, you're not like, if you had to play like three or four nights in a row, mm. like, I don't know how you'd be able to make it through that. Uh, I found some good alternatives to help soothe my voice and stuff. So like just uh, like silver um, lozenges and stuff like those are like the Rolls Royce. And then yeah. there's another little pill thing you put under your tongue that PJ taught me about, which is like a godsend. Cause yeah, I definitely, especially I get some drinks in me. I'm all excited and I just fucking blow it right out. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> because they're talking to you at the end of the night you're just you're kind of like give me a second <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah. yeah catch my breath i'm like a big tomato like yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> um, so so with the the neighbors and and that whole art and music and stuff going on like what kind of music were were you getting into at that young of an age well what was I don't know if I would say I was getting into, but like what, well, kind of what they were playing, like they were French. So it was like a lot of Acadian, like Louisiana type inspired music. And then like, just like classic rock hits there, like Beatles, Rolling Stones kind of mm-hmm. stuff, which is always good at any age. So Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the classics are that for a yeah. reason. Yeah. yeah. Absolute. So, so yeah. when did you get into like the more raw, heavier, like punk scene and and that um, probably like i don't know late a little later in life well no i feel like i go through spurts i'm all over the place like i'm never really just stuck in one music genre or anything like that i'm kind of sporadic but i think i was trying to be a rebel in middle school there and that's where i kind of dabbled or searched for punk more so so yeah yeah, Cause I know like I've seen, um, I've seen you post a few links on your Facebook. Like there's some like soul and some R and B stuff going on there. So you're, you're all over the map. Uh, yeah. I'm big on fifties kind of yeah. stuff there. Whatnot. But, that whole vibe. Oh, yeah. yeah. Frank Zappa. <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so a little like a little eclectic, a little, little left of oh, center. Yeah. yeah. I like some weirdos for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. They're fantastic. Like Zappa is just amazing. And everybody, oh, yeah. in his, everybody in his band are just like sick players. Oh, like, you had yeah. to be if you wanted to be in that band. Like, right. Like, I don't absolutely. know how the, anyone would get through the audition process. Oh, man, I'd be in tears. <laughs> I'd be like, don't make me do it again. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. Um, so art in school, like so you like middle school, like art class, like doing like paper mache collage, like all that kind of stuff. Um, I think we were probably more basic broke school. So it was more like uh, a lot of oil pastels and things like that. But mm. uh, I think that's why I never want to touch an oil pastel again. I'm just like, no, they're crunchy and dirty. Yeah. Though my art style is very dirty. But I'm like, no, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> um, well, I wouldn't say it's dirty. I think it's I think it's like um it's it's raw but i wouldn't say it's yeah like, <laughs> yeah for sure like it's it's real emotion mm. oh for you know. sure for sure yeah so you went away to nova scotia for a fine arts degree yeah i went to nascad in halifax for four years mm-hmm. yeah so it was great loved it learned a lot of crazy things did a lot of stupid things i you know glad i got it out of the way then <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah. what it's for i mean oh. you know make you make all those wrong turns you know early in life so that you can you know stay on the straight path whatever that's called yeah no absolutely for sure <laughs> yeah um so when you were done with school like have you because i mean you're an artist full-time right like you're yeah. creating- most of the time yeah like i i work at a restaurant part-time there as well so yeah i mean you know bills all- have to be paid and all that that's it yeah yeah <laughs> So you mean, yeah, like, like, like with anything, you know, you, you do the day job or the, you know, the side mm-hmm. hustle, you know, to be able to support, you know, the passions that you have, because the passions are generally not going to make any money. I mean, you and I both yeah. know there's no money in playing music. It's just not steady. It's like, there's a couple months you're like, oh my God, I'm an all-star. And then after that, it's like, what the hell happened? So yeah. it's just getting that a little more steady. That would be kind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, 
so so do you also um teach art uh i used to do one of those like paint night kind of classes there way long ago but aside from that that's the only teaching i ever really did for art okay yeah um so where do you like where do you create most of your art like when you're when you're working on stuff just in the house or do you have like a workshop yeah i have a i have a big room that's devoted like my studio space it's just mess art it's great a lot of your work is is all over the city of moncton yeah i got got a few pieces out there i only have one mural in moncton there by st james gate but Mm -hmm. Well, crusty old fish for you, you know. <laughs> was that part of the um, Inspire Festival? Yeah, I think okay. it was like the fourth year for it or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It, do you know? Is that coming back this year? Or? I think so. I think they're like touring around Monk or Moncton, uh, like New Brunswick and stuff, and doing different pop up murals and whatnot there. But I haven't been much in tune this year for what's up. So we had. Um, last fuck all the years are blurring together now it's probably two years two or Eight? three years ago now but because of covid like yeah <laughs> big, covid was one gaps. huge year yeah you know? um but we had uh, a couple of um a couple of artists that did like a mural at the the library over in in chatham and um i think there was one in newcastle too on the nice. i think the side of the grocery store or something weird like that yeah um, so is mural something that that you enjoy that you'd want to do more of? Um, if it's well organized and stuff for sure. Like I don't drive and stuff, so it's kind of hard for me to get around and putt. Yeah. So just need to get my ass in gear there, you know. But it's a, Maybe it's a by the time I hit 40, I'll have my license. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no hurry. Um mm. so but like doing a mural would be a, a, a whole different game than you know creating a sculpture or painting on a, on a canvas. Yeah. And like, yeah, it is. It's a, like, you need a lot more equipment and stuff and hands on like other people there. Mm-hmm. And I like to fart around by myself for the most part. Cause just, you know, get in my head, do my thing. Like mm-hmm. I work a lot with another artist when it comes to ceramics, uh, like Tim Isaac, like he's got a great, uh, uh, studio space there kilns and everything like that do raku firings and different things like that but aside from him he's really the only artist i collab with and can work yeah. well with so yeah yeah so you i mean you're kind of all over the board with what you're creating with like you're not just sculpting or painting like you're doing ceramics you're doing i thought i saw you doing like glass blowing at one point like oh no that was probably just the ceramics some of the glazes okay. are like just intense or it could be garbage i repurposed or something too to make okay. something else yeah because i'm i'm one of those <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that's another thing like a lot some of your art like you're repurposing things mm-hmm. um i saw uh, what was the piece that you did with the head um all the mushrooms on it yeah actually it's like right behind oh. me <laughs> yeah <laughs> there you go okay so like that's just uh like a mannequin from like a department store that you've Taken pretty and- much and then i picked all the mushrooms and then i don't know if you can see it with the camera there but like yeah all the mushrooms have like probably not even pointing at it correctly oh, yeah. but no that was yeah. perfect <laughs> oh yes awesome <laughs> um but yeah i just like uh, painted inside of those and stuff and that was a, actually another project for inspired for another year so okay yeah so, they, so they you was like on a display and then you got to keep it kind of thing because yeah yours. Yeah. yeah yeah it went to it was at pink flamingos for a bit and it was uh just below uh, apple art gallery where the arches of saint george are so mm-hmm. it had its little tour you know so yeah it's a little saint george tour so, cool yeah keeping yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it classy yeah. <laughs> keep it classy yeah. moncton <laughs> yeah always oh. nothing but class <laughs> yeah um so what like I suppose like every piece would have a different purpose or come from a different place. Like where do you get or draw inspiration from when you're thinking up a, a particular piece of work? Um, it depends. Cause sometimes I go in there, like no idea and just like smoke a joint. And I'm like, oh, I like this fabric, let's go. And, you know, and mm-hmm. 
things kind of happen organically and stuff. And then after I kind of find a meaning in what has happened kind of thing. But yes, uh, a lot of pieces, like when they're portraits, most times they'll be of my family members, like old black and white pictures of my grandma and like different grandparents and parents and yada, yada kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Cause I find that's always interesting. I mean, it's always awkward when you have like a painting of somebody, you know, and it's like, ah, friggin, you know, so-and-so staring at me again. It's like, I'd rather. <laughs> so for like when I'm selling kind of thing, it's better for people to like, not know who they are in a way, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. 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 The an anonymity of the piece kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. So some of the, um, some of your stuff, like you've done a few different shows at, um, like not music, but like for art shows, uh, like um, across from Deluxe, is a, I see those pop up every now and again. Yeah, so, I used to run that out of my apartment and stuff. So have like the public come in, get a bunch of artists to put up works and stuff, and then have like a couple of generally acoustic, not really plug in, lots of equipment type bands, just because the place is only so large and stuff. And then have a little wine bar kind of deal there snacks and just get swanky and have a good time with people so yeah um yeah. so like the um because like yeah i'm not i'm not very familiar with like how the whole art community operates but those kind of seem almost like you're putting together like a punk show like a house show like a punk show yeah like, yeah it's, it's definitely more of a like inclusive vibe kind of thing it takes away kind of the fear like uh i forget the word for it right now but like just that weirdness of going to like a hoity-toity place where maybe you feel a little more l laid back or whatnot kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I think it's more inclusive to those people. Plus like a lot of younger people kind of get that crowd. And like even the artists that are applying and stuff, it's people that have never had a show and whatnot. And, you know, it can be the first kind of motivator to get them going and to keep going with their art and whatnot because sometimes when you're applying to galleries and stuff and you just keep hearing no it's like okay well forget it because clearly you know yeah. i'm not that great or you know wherever your mind kind of goes insecurities right so yeah especially kinda, as artists oh you know, yeah we internalize a lot of that and you know like for a lot of it it can be very intimidating like you said like you know and you keep getting told no 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 and mm. then you just kind of give up and, and for some people it's extremely devastating because you know a lot of their anxieties and insecurities they're putting it out through their art and absolutely if, and if they feel or they're told that that's not good enough that's a mm. dangerous spot to fall into mentally oh absolutely yeah yeah like do you i mean you've been doing art for a long time like have you mm. had those types of struggles along the way oh absolutely absolutely and still like a lot of my stuff like it's not really mainstream and if I want to do shows, you know, like even like the library and stuff like that, it's like no nudity or violence. Like, oh, that's all my good pieces, you know, <laughs> can't show them. So, like you got to paint fish. So generally when you see tacky little fish things, except for the titty fishes, those are those kind of shows going on for mm -hmm. me kind of things. So. Yeah. 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 That's, like your art is very like pushes a lot of boundaries. Like some pieces can make some people a little uncomfortable. Absolutely. Um, like I know you had that. Uh, <laughs> I just saw it the other day, actually, it, it came up on my feed. You posted it a while ago, so I don't know why I didn't see it before, but your, um, your big cock planter. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's huge, man. Poke an eye right out. Let me tell you. Uh... <laughs> you no, know, that's. Man, I hope that wasn't from a cast because holy shit. Um, right? No. <laughs> um, no. Just and, feeling it out, you know? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> uh, and then you had another um, exhibit or, or a, a collection of pieces that uh, were pertaining to, you know, the vagina and, and all that stuff. Like, yeah. some people, <laughs> some people, <laughs> whatever. Like, you know, but like, yeah. like some people, you know, anything that has to do with any type of sexuality, whether it's, you know, in a sexual manner or in your, in that case, not a sexual manner it's in, in more of an empowering moment, mm. you know, cause like when I see somebody put that kind of art forward, 
I think of that as being them taking ownership and being empowered and trying to, to have other people feel empowered about, about their sexuality or about, you know, anything that's very personal, you know, yeah. um, and, and art is the way to, you know, get that out and, and, and have p- people as a community come together over those pieces and mm. spark a conversation. And, you know, and, you know, for some people, they need that. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, I go through different phases of that, like different things like that. It's like wherever I need to express in my life. So that was probably for me, like a moment of just like, like you said, feeling empowered as a woman or, you know, that's kind of where those like ownerships of those parts kind of come to light or become works of art kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's Mm -hmm. what I find is the most important thing about art is it's Mm. a reflection art is generally a reflection of society, you know, yeah. good, good, bad, you know, warts and all like, yeah, for sure. You know. And, and that's the thing too. Like I want to make people uncomfortable. I want to make you feel I'm making art. I'm not making something to paste on your wall. Like go to Walmart. If that's what you're looking for, I'm going to, you know, give you yeah. a polished turd or so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so freaky. So Yeah. But like, yeah, mm-hmm. like that, that's, that's, like I said, that's the powerful thing with, with art and, and it's true with visual art and it's true with music as well. Mm. You know? Cause like, I, I see you as when you're creating your art as well on stage, it's, it's a hundred percent like, Thanks. you know, like there's no, there's no holding back, you know, this is who you are. And, and uh, like just watching your, your performance on stage you get all of it like oh thanks you get the the flirty kind of sexual kind of thing and then the next second you know you're giving the finger and you're <laughs> spitting you know i got a mood swing yeah you know? yeah you know or or you're you know you're rubbing somebody in your armpit and you know you're like mm. all that type of shit, you know oh, like, there's yeah. so many different sides of of who you are on stage during that performance and uh i think it's empowering and i think anyone in in the audience because i know myself as a man seeing a woman do that i'm like fuck yeah go get it yeah so for for somebody in the crowd like a girl or a woman that's seeing Mm. somebody else do that that's got to be uplifting and yeah you know so kind of being a role model like do you find do you have any type of internal thought of of that when you're when you're doing it um I mean, for the most part, I'm just trying to like do a like decent job or whatnot and have fun and whatnot. Um, I'm kind of in a way I am kind of like, fuck you, because I'm just like loving myself in that moment and doing my thing. And like, yeah, I want to motivate people and make them feel good and be like, hey, that's your skin. Love it. Whatnot kind of thing there. But I don't know. I, I've never really been asked that question. I haven't really ever thought of it for sure, but yeah. Cause that's, you know, that's the thing like art and, and artists um, inspire and empower the next set of people that are coming up to do it. And I think, mm. you know, art exhibits, stage performances, you know, those are all hand in hand to, you know, that people see that and, and yeah. then they take, they take that on and then like, Hey, I can do that. You know, oh, I've made a piece of art kind of similar to that, but it has a different feel or came from a different place. So, you know, maybe I can, you know, put on an exhibit or show somebody else, you know, outside of just keeping it in my bedroom for myself. Because a lot of people don't put it out to the world. Yeah. And I mean, that's it too. Sometimes you just need the right person to come get you so you can kind of do that. And I mean, like I was fortunate enough with like PJ getting at me and being like, you to do karaoke, you know? And so like, that could be the same thing for somebody else, you know, just that right moment that kind of sparks the light for you. Yeah. From doing those karaoke's and then getting asked to come onto the witches, like how intimidated were you in, in joining the band? Oh, uh, well, I didn't really know anybody. I knew of PJ, of course, because it's PJ, but uh, it, yeah, it was kind of intimidating because I just didn't want to 
suck, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I was just trying to like kind of be impressive and be in the band. So I'm glad things worked out and stuff and I have so much fun with it. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. So coming from that, you were doing karaoke. Is, yeah. <laughs> were you not in any bands before the witches? No, it's my first band. My first and only band, really. Yeah. That, that's crazy, especially with how you perform on stage. Like just, oh, you know, because well, that's years of karaoke practice, man. I'm telling you, <laughs> you really get into it. Like me and my roommate, okay. Shannon, when we lived in Halifax, we went every single day of the week to karaoke. And okay. then when we'd win pizza, pizza cards and stuff. Oh, we were psychotic, man. Like when I say okay. I did karaoke, I did karaoke. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, <laughs> You owned that <laughs> shit. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Because, yeah, that's, I mean, karaoke is one thing, but then playing with the band and, and then, you know, you're not singing the words that are on the screen. Like you're, you know, you have to learn the lyrics and, and be able to, to sing them without, you know, following the little ball across the screen. And, yeah. you know, live performance, especially with the type of band that you guys are, you know, with all that, you know, loudness and energy and angst and anger. And, you know, it's not an easy thing to, to just jump into a band like that. No, for sure. And there's still times where I blank out on words and it's just like, just keep mumbling things. Nobody will know. <laughs> yeah, fake it till you make it. Somewhere along this you know. line, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. So do you have any, um, like, because you did that first full length. Mm-hmm. And um, then we and did the split. The split with um, Freak Dancer? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I have it. I just haven't looked at it in a while. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so do you have any, like... I know like the whole fucking quarantine or whatever, but do you guys have, or have you been working on new songs yet or new material for a second full length? Well, we did. Yeah. We have, uh, I think like six, seven songs ready to go kind of thing. Not necessarily recorded all of them or anything yet, but where we like Monday was the first time we practiced in like, I don't know, like, last summer maybe at least, yeah close to a year you know? at least right yeah so it's like oof, we gotta like relearn all those songs like and whatnot so we'll see maybe we don't even have those many <laughs> we can't remember so let's we'll see you what's still fresh in the noggin no video evidence or demo tapes like cassette recordings or nothing i, bootlegs. I got a little uh little recording on the phone that's it and of course it's super crunchy so it's like <laughs> And you're like trying to decipher it there. It's like, oh yeah, I know what I'm saying there or what you're playing there and stuff. So it's that, that fun little guessing game. So whatever, play on. <laughs> yeah, 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 really. Um, yeah, we're just bouncing from art to music to art to music. Just awesome. Um, I know when I was in um, high school, uh, yeah, it was, it was just a regular art class. Like we did like paper machés and stuff. And I did a, I wanted to do a life-size Spider-Man. Oh yeah. So what I did like for the hands, I took like actual like cast and I cast my hands, like doing the whole web flip. Oh yeah. And then I, and then I cut along the side and then like squeeze my hand out and then I patched it up. And then the rest of it was like uh, chicken wire. So I did like, yeah. what, it was life-size cause I used my hand as the, you know, but the problem was, is the hands were so heavy that it was like weighing it down oh no <laughs> <laughs> and, and then and then on top of that um the images that i was using like to like color and paint spider-man i yeah i totally got it wrong on the day and i made it look like he had like a thong like, mm-hmm. like, a, like a borat kind of a <laughs> yeah pair of underwear sassy spider-man <laughs> was, what's up yeah it was totally <laughs> sassy <laughs> Oh, that's great. Yeah. I love that. Um, <laughs> I'll just see if I can find a picture of it somewhere. I think oh. my mom, my mom probably has a picture somewhere. Of yeah, absolutely. That Send that my way. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was pretty sassy. So what are you working on now? Like, um, I'm finishing up some uh, ceramic masks. Actually, I got one right here. I can kind of show you. Oh, that's so, badass. Yeah, he's got his little safety pins in his face and stuff there. He's he's wet right now because I glued a bunch of diamonds, but I touched it, so Uh-oh. fix that after. <laughs> yeah, Damn. But yeah, you've got a lot of pieces in there. Like so, like, oh yeah, are you constantly creating art? Pretty like, much, 
And it's like, I'm never just on one thing. Like I'll be painting or doing ceramics and everything. And I'll have like, I have so many paintings on the go at the same time. It's just like, ah, bored of looking at you. So throw you in the closet for a bit and forget about you. So I can be excited about it again. So, okay. so you're kind of yeah. like a, like a, like a bumblebee just kind of buzzing from one flower to the next. I am big time bumblebee. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's funny. I just said that you're wearing a bumblebee. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Um, how so how long does it, yeah, how long does it take for you to like finish a piece though? Or is a piece ever really finished? Um, yeah, definitely. There's signs once I'm like, oh, I'm so stressed with you. It's like, bye, you're done yeah. kind of thing. And I mean, it depends on the piece. Cause like, if I'm super feeling it, I will like stay up all night and just like fire it out kind of thing or, generally not in one night there but yeah you know i'll be more productive with it and get it done in a shorter time frame but i don't know there's some pieces that have taken me years like huge paintings that are like over five feet kind of thing those mm-hmm. suckers take me forever the the fine art is is definitely something that i was into in school like i said but i never pursued it past that um, okay Went did to superman do that to you did that project kill it for you yeah, spider man yeah he fucking yeah no. <laughs> ruined art forever ruined art i ended up getting a hundred percent in that class actually it was the only time i got a hundred percent fucking right good for you yeah like we had like a bunch of different projects throughout the year like you know you had to look at yourself in the mirror and draw your face and like yeah a lot of like stuff that you do like later on in like um like animation class and stuff because like my wife's an animator. So oh, nice. that's, where, that's where I met her in college. And some of the assignments they had was to like draw their own facial expressions with different emotions. Okay. And um, so we had that in high school, like one assignment, which was challenging and didn't look anything like me at all. <laughs> that's for <laughs> sure. Um, but then I went to college and took um, game design. And uh, I remember we had um in the first year of college that I went to, they had different classes that, that they wanted to see what direction you should take. Okay. And I, and I remember the, um, one of the animation instructors came into the art class and she said, you're in the wrong program, dude. Like you should be drawing all the time versus, you know, uh-huh. programming computers. Yeah. And, and I regret not switching over at that time. Cause now it's not to say that you can't, you know, teach a dog, an old dog, new tricks or anything, but, there's a lot of years of development that, you know, practice and re- repetition, you know, so having gone through the process and in, in going to the fine arts school, mm. like how many hours have you been like, is it all the time? Like, do you ever stop? Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I definitely, I'll go out and do different things. Cause I find if I, just lock myself in the art room after a while it's like you just get dra- like dried out and you're just staring at nothing so it's like all right well let's go see a, a bud or something or yeah no I definitely I spend a good chunk of time but I mean probably like four hours a day maybe mm-hmm. kind of thing like I try to devote some time like every day kind of thing but yeah it's a good a mental cleanse for me so mm-hmm. I definitely need it in my life for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do you find like now with, with COVID happened and everyone being in isolation, like you kind of had to be locked up kind of a thing. How much did the uh, art help get you through all of that? Um, It helped quite a bit, but at the same time, I was not one of those people who was like, oh, I'm not going to hang out with people. I was like, Hey, if you're lonely, come over and stuff because I mean, a lot of my friends like myself live alone and stuff. So for a lot of them, it became kind of suicidal thoughts and stuff. And my neighbor, uh, the house next door to me, not in my building there, but actually committed suicide. And we watched them bring out her body and like try to resuscitate her. And I was like, fuck that. That's not happening to any of my buds. So like I made sure I could be there and kind of support whoever I -hmm. could, you know, and, you know, I mean, it helped myself too. Like it was a two way street there for sure. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a rule follower at that time. Yeah. Yeah. No, but like, as far as mental, I mean, that's, that's a big, big thing that, that 
kind of had a, a big spotlight put on it during this whole, you know, pandemic situation. Because mm -hmm. um, the mental health issues in New Brunswick and the support that there is or lack thereof, mm. I mean, in different communities, it, it's better. But as mm. a as a whole, it's there's definitely some some big problems um, with with getting support um, for sure. And, you know, and and having a, a group of friends or a tight knit knit group of friends that you can rely on each other and you know mm -hmm. phone them up or you know go and see them kind of thing. Yeah, because that's important. it for sure, and that's it. Even like sometimes being on the phone and text or whatever, even though it's communication it's not a genuine communication like you know seeing face to face being there in the flesh you know it just does something different you know there's just such a realness to it so, yeah so yeah. like as far as like a support group because like you say you you had those thoughts as well like well oh sorry no i should clarify like i didn't really i didn't have okay. the i was just more loneliness kind of thing there so that was my support for that kind of thing but I did have a lot of friends who like, you know, they're musicians. They had, they just lost everything they do, everything they live for. And so a lot of people, it's like they gave it up kind of thing, which was really sad because, you know, you give your whole life for that and whatnot. So, well, I mean, hopefully it's getting out of that now and people are, are be able to, you know, allowed to get out and, 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 you know, do those things again. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I, I'm i assuming since you're in New Brunswick as well, like, it's pretty lax in Miramichi right now. Like, no mask. Like, everybody's go coming and going. It's great. Yeah, yeah there's like a I lot. There's a lot of um, no mask. I mean, there's still a lot of people that do wear masks. Like, I still will mask up if I'm going in a spot where there's a lot of people. Yeah. You know, um, but that's more for, for me. And like, because my wife yeah. is, um, she would be a high risk. So, you oh, okay. know, try to. You know, well, yeah, away, no, but for sure. I have a, a group of people that I that I hang out with, but I'm I'm mm -hmm. not like super social where I'll go up to everybody and start chatting kind of thing. Like I kind of keep my distance anyway. Um, yeah. Unless it's like you know at a show where I'm amongst like peers, like you know fellow musicians like yourself, like yeah, that that's where I'm in my element and I'm totally you know. But if I'm going to the grocery store and I hate to say it, but if I see somebody that I kind of know but I don't know all that well, I'm mm. gonna like turn the other way <laughs> and know? i mean it, you do you right like yeah. everybody's different about it like my mom's totally still weirded out about it me i'm like i don't care like mm -hmm. go ahead cough on me i already had covid <laughs> i survived give me a second dose like whatever <laughs> so, yeah yeah no i i yeah. caught it um two months ago three yeah no, about a month and a half and i didn't have any symptoms or anything i mean i was vaxxed but it, it it I had like no symptoms, but work made me stay uh -huh. home. And so I had to work from home, but it was, it was pretty, you know, but then like my wife and my son didn't catch it from me. You know, oh, they're, that's they're, awesome. They're vaxxed up too, but mm. it, you know, the science kind of supports it a little bit, but at the same time, not everybody gets a flu shot either. You know? No. Yeah, so. I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, I figure I've eaten so much rotten food and different things <laughs> over my year. My immune system's like solid. It's Teflon and steel. <laughs> Pop out. So. Well, I mean, when we were kids, we would go outside and, and play in the dirt and the mud and, you know, yeah, lick the ground and, you know, <laughs> still that's... licking the ground. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but like, as we've gotten older and like kids now, like they're, they're not as resilient as we were when we were younger. Yeah. But I suppose I'm, I'm much older than you are. So <laughs> there's that. I don't know. I don't know. I'm 30. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm much older than you are. Yeah. All right. Well, looking great. No worries. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So the, um, so yeah, practicing last Monday with the band. Um, do you guys have any plans at all? I suppose it's hard to plan like shows or tours. Or yeah, like that. no, it's like we're step taking the first dip in the pool. Yeah. You know, so uh, we'll see. I'm I'm sure we'll get some things going after we have like four or five jams or something. Because mm -hmm. right now we're a tad bit rusty, but it's good. We're full of excitement, raring to go. So, <laughs> you know, awesome. super stoked. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's awesome. Yeah, because you guys are definitely a tight band when you play like oh thanks yeah uh, 
yeah, I think we all discipline ourselves in that way. Nobody wants to look foolish. So yeah, well, I mean, that's yeah. that's the thing when like the good bands take their each their individual roles very seriously. So mm. then when they come together collectively, it all just kind of it's like a piece of a puzzle. It just kind of locks in and fits. And when you've developed that over the years, because you guys have been together for how long now? Like Ooh, bad question. Like I've <laughs> I've been in the band um frig like somewhere between five and seven years, maybe. I'm not yeah. even sure. Well, you guys were busy uh, during guessing. those five or seven years. Yeah. And then I were- think three years three five years before that i was in there i always ask nadine she's the best at those questions <laughs> <laughs> yeah well no yeah because they they did they went to like newfoundland and they played a couple of different yeah. spots but like since you've been in the band i know what well, we played with you guys a couple of times but you guys were pretty busy for a while like almost every other weekend or every weekend for for a couple of months yeah. at a time and then you guys won the music new brunswick award um, yeah. two of them actually that was not long before the whole COVID thing kind of started but yeah. you guys played often enough and, and f- like that you guys developed that you don't even have to think about what the other person is doing like that chemistry is there so oh, once yeah. it's developed it doesn't take much time to f- kind of fall right back in mm. yeah I think probably by next jam we'll be uh, speaking with eyes again there so. right yeah, because and sure. you've only had one jam so far, right? Oh so yeah. It only takes like two or three, and then you're ready to play a show. Mm, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I'd well, like I mean, to think, anyways. <laughs> yeah, because you guys do like a forty-five an hour long set. Like, you can bang that out a couple times in in one jam to kind of tighten it up. Oh, for sure. If we're motivated enough to. <laughs> the best motivator is to book a show. Like, you just book a show, and then you're like, okay, for we gotta that. be ready by that day. Yeah, maybe that's what we should do. See about yeah. pinching a show. Yeah, yeah. Because sure. I know like there's that new spot, um, the arcade bar. Yeah, zeros. Yeah, it, it used to be flamingos, right? Yeah, yeah. It's Joel, same owner there. Just new vibe and stuff. I haven't gone down there yet. It's on my street. I have no excuse. I'm just <laughs> been housebound. Too yeah. many projects. Too yeah. much work. The Cavo is a great spot to play, but I, I've never gone into the flamingos when it was that. Um, yeah they got a great stage in there like i'm assuming i'm pretty sure a lot of it's still kind of that layout the awesome checkered floor and all that groovy feel so yeah i think it's the same backdrop on the stage too oh yeah love yeah. that no, no there's actually a show tonight ba johnson's playing and uh, oh, right. i think out of control are there so yeah oh, cool should be a good show may yeah. or may not go we'll see get, <laughs> depends get how much work and, you get done yeah <laughs> pretty much pretty much yeah. So what are you yeah. working on right right now? Like, what's the piece that you've got? Well, I got a silk screen, some uh, band shirts for another dose. It okay. used to, they used to be a gross bush. I don't know if you've seen them play. No, uh, a lot of a lot of good buds in there. Yeah, good, like great punk band. So yeah, definitely check them out. They're actually playing next weekend here. If you're cruising along for a show there, yeah, come yeah. on down. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, there, and I think they're playing St. John the the weekend after. So I'm not really sure. Yeah, mm. you're not you're not their tour manager. So. <laughs> not yet. No, no, <laughs> I don't plan on being it too much. Too much. Yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah. I can't even manage myself. God. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the uh. So you do t-shirts as well as paintings oh, yeah, and sculptures so, and all that stuff. So. Yeah, I'm like amateur silk screen, pretty ghetto silk screen there, but right they're cool. Yeah, they're fun. That's how they just used, try used to, to do sell it. stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's how they used to do it back in the day. Like, yeah. It's very, absolutely. Very, very punk rock. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So I got um, crash questions that I ask everybody. Um, sure. And they're, they're kind of quick fire, but you know, some of them are a little deeper than others, but okay. we'll see how you do. Um, All my right. First, my first question, anyone that's seen this, program if there's anyone that's watching knows the first question is always the same one do you prefer cake or pie cake okay yeah you're in the le- probably the 25 percent what <laughs> yeah. that's it Serious. do they not think of cheesecake it's a cake 
Yeah, that's I don't know. That's considered a pie too. It, that's kind what? of like that's kind Since of like since when cheese. it's a cheesecake. It says right in there. But it has a crust. All right. Well, I'm in the category of cheesecake, so okay. I might be in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that, that probably is its own category. Yeah, I'll have yeah. to add that to the question. Yeah. <laughs> Cake, pie, or cheesecake? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what kind of cheesecake? Are you like a chocolate or a, oh, a traditional? Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. chocolate all the way. Yeah. Uh-huh. My mom makes a badass Toblerone cheesecake. Oh, wow. And blow your mind. Oreo bottom. Well, watch out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so is there like a coffee or a tea that would go with that? Oh, if you want to. I mean, it's perfection in itself, so. Anything else on it? It's just yeah. icing on the cake. You know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so are you a coffee or like a herbal tea kind of a chick? Oh, coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I need to get powered up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Black coffee oh, yeah. all the way for me. Uh, oh, same here. Yeah. 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 It's good coffee. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing. Like you, you really know that that's the other thing. Like I used to drink like with, you know, cream and sugar and, and I'm not knocking anyone that does because, you know, it's, it's coffees, you know, however you want to drink it, it's good. Yeah. Um, but I noticed I find it, I can totally tell the difference between a good coffee and a bad coffee more now that I'm drinking it black. Yeah. yeah. Oh, big times. It's like instant coffee. It's like, better get me a sugar. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, like the only time really. It's like bitter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what would be your favorite piece of art that that you've made honestly uh probably i did this frank zappa piece in university and sold it and it's the only piece i've ever regretted selling so i guess that would probably make that my favorite piece really yeah yeah it was like super bright color just like so loose it's one of those pieces you'll never be able to replicate again or i can't replicate my own piece again so i'm like ah whoops a daisies so. Did you never even bothered to try to replicate it? No, no. Yeah. It's a one and done. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. It's like pour paint pouring and stuff like that. There's too many organic components. It's just like oh, okay, ah. yeah. Just worked Whoops. out on the day, kind of thing. Yeah, she sure yeah. did. Nice. <laughs> did yeah. you have any pictures of it? Like, is there anything that you've any record of of what it was? Oh yeah, I'm trying to look around the room and see. If there's anything here with it but i don't think so it's definitely like on my page and stuff like probably like yeah, somewhere yeah. Is, but yeah. Cool. yeah um so what would be your your proudest moment as an artist mm. um like where you felt the most gratified I when I got my first contract i did a contract for Fido and Vice like right after i graduated and I sold like rights to my paintings and that made me feel like a big shot. And that yeah. was cool. But I think that was probably the first moment where I felt like, Oh fuck. Yeah. I'm legit now. Kind yeah, of yeah. Thing. So that was cool. Yeah. yeah. I guess that would be. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so this is kind of a different question. Uh, I've, asked it a couple, I've asked it a couple of times. It's kind of a funny question. I, I like yeah. the answers so far. I've, I've liked all the answers I've been given. <laughs> um, right. So, so if you had one album or CD or whatever stuck in your car, yeah. what's the one that you would not want it to be? Not want it to be? Yeah. Oh, any fucking Bon Jovi. Get out of here. <laughs> like, oh my God. My friggin' best friend's husband all the time. He knows I hate Bon Jovi. And he'll just be like, we go to karaoke and he'll do it on purpose and stuff. And it's like, oh, George, way. But, oh, man. Yeah, no, probably Bon Jovi for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. 80s hair, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. something about him. Just irritating. Yeah, yeah. can't handle. Yeah, it's funny because, like, <laughs> I've seen, like, footage of him singing live now. And it's yeah. like he doesn't he doesn't even enunciate words anymore. It's all just like one long syllable. It's oh, it's yeah. really weird. He's probably just a machine by now. He's like yeah, a robot yeah. with more, <laughs> little flop skin on there, you know. <laughs> yeah. well, they're, the, they're doing like country music now. <laughs> you know, like, Stay on that channel. <laughs> yeah, they're on the country channel now. <laughs> yeah, he's yours. <laughs> 
<laughs> Keep them. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else ever say Bon Jovi? No, but I've gotten Ugh. I've gotten Sublime. Oh yeah. Um, I've gotten country western, just like a genre, not specific artist. Okay. <laughs> um fuck, what was the other one? Yeah, I can't remember what the la- the last one was, but there was some pretty good, some interesting pretty stinkers. I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to go back. Yeah, yeah. Um uh, so what would be like are you a big movie buff like no i don't even own a tv no no so like do you do a lot of reading then no i hate reading <laughs> <laughs> i'm terrible like i literally i just fart around with my art stuff i'm like okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, only time i see tv is like i go to a friend's or something yeah yeah so <laughs> when you're create when you're in your art mode like do you have like music on or is it like full silence? Oh yeah. Oh no. Silence isn't for me for yeah. sure. Yeah. No, it's either music or like uh, my neighbors jam really loud. So if they're rocking out, okay, I'll just listen to whatever they're kind of messing with. So yeah. Yeah. So what would, what would be like a motivational jam? Like what's your jock jam? Oh, it depends on my mood. I'm such a moody bitch that like, <laughs> Depends if I'm doing something hardcore, maybe I want some punk rock or, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I'm like stressed out and I need a little pan flute in my life. You know, <laughs> I'm like literally all over. So, <laughs> so what was that? Do you remember that infomercial, the guy that had all those the, the flutes? What was his name? Do you remember that? It was on today. I always had the infomercials on TV. Was it like the Tim Clement guy? Could be. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I just remember like my mom for relaxation CDs. That's who she had. And I ended up stealing one of those CDs, like her relaxation CDs out of all the CDs she had. It's like, yeah, I might need to relax in my life, you know, so I'm right going to take this. <laughs> the pan flute. I think it must yeah. have been him because I don't know of many other pan flute artists that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like I remember in the mall, like when I was a kid, there would be like, a pan flute band that come down and they just be in the Champlain mall, like outside of Sears, like doing their thing and stuff. But really? yeah. Yeah. Wow. We didn't have but, that here. No, no, <laughs> no fun for Mayor Mishi. Sorry. No, wasn't, wasn't a lot of that going on. That's for sure. Uh, my mom's no. actually from Mayor Mishi. Oh, is she really? Yeah. Yeah. She's from Chatham. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Small world. Small world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Um, Oh man, pan flute. That's funny. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like pickup, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of like pickup trucks and ACDC and uh John Prine. Like those are the those are the staples for for around here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No pan flute, eh? Missing no out. Flute. Missing out. <laughs> 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 yeah. You'll um, think twice next time you're in like a hippie store there, passage or whatever. Get yeah, yourself um, a pan flute. Yeah, or if I'll I see probably, you next, I'm gonna try to remember. I'll probably go pan down flute like in a, your life. A YouTube <laughs> rabbit hole of pan flute after this. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I want to hear about it absolute yeah, yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll start sending you links. <laughs> oh my god, right? <laughs> what are you doing? Relaxing? Oh, me too. <laughs> oh, amazing. Yeah, like what inspires you the most? Uh I don't know. I guess just like my daily life and chilling with friends and stuff. And it's mostly like experiences through that, that I'll get inspired, whether it's like, oh, you pissed me off or oh, I'm really feeling love from you today or whatnot like that. That's kind of generally where I'll get more motivated or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Usually. Mm-hmm. So just from your community of friends kind of thing. Pretty much. I mean, with writing lyrics as well, it's like generally it's an experience or like, you know, yeah. you sing from sing from personal experience and, and life lessons yeah. versus like I, yeah, like I won't name names of people because some of the songs are pretty rude and people might get upset. So they're just personal diaries at this point. Yeah, so I mean, if they're hearing it and they're like, "That sounds like it could be about me," then it probably is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're a psycho bitch. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot of those. Yeah. Do you pen lyrics um, outside of playing in the band? Like, do you sit like, do you have like a journal, like where you write ideas and stuff down for, for words? 
Oh, big times. Like I could be like drinking at somebody's place, just grab a napkin and be like, stuff it in my pocket and be like, all right, I'm going to fart this together and make this a tune later on kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I hear a lot of people that journaling, like, you know, Kurt Cobain used to journal a lot and Eddie Vedder walks around with like a stack of binders and shit, like a little different now with like your phone and stuff. You can just kind of make a memo or whatever. So are you yeah. more, do you do that too? Like memos on your phone or is it just not really? Paper? I'm so not tech. Like even like for this interview, I'm like, Hey, I don't know how I'm supposed to do this. Like I'm so like electronically like impaired. I'm so like pen and paper, like, well, you yeah. don't even have a TV. Like I know I'm living in a different time. <laughs> I just time traveled here. Hello. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I know. Like I find like a lot of people rely on stuff like that too much. Like I find even myself, I'll have to like stop myself and be like, okay, I've checked my phone like the last hour, like five times, like put it right. down, step away. You know, I guess that's kind of what phone patrol is about. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's having your, <laughs> like being glued to your phone. It's like I went to New York for a trip and I was just like, oh, my God, so many people were just like with their phone. It's like, OK, like it feels so fake and phony and stuff and nobody's mm -hmm. real, like just looking so robotic and, you know, washed away and controlled to a degree, you know, without realizing. So that's yeah. kind of what that was all stemming from. Yeah. 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 The message was received and. and Mm -hmm. like that's a, a big thing now is a lot of people don't live in the moment mm. like, you know like i like watching like i said before like concerts and footage and stuff but i'll watch like a, a legit concert versus somebody's cam like phone footage that they recorded or i'll see people in the stands and you're seeing the band in front of them and all you see is little phones like all along yeah. the aisle. it's like no, put the phones away and watch the band perform like yeah take a pic have a memory but you yeah know, but then put it enjoy. away absolutely yeah because i know some people um like jack white and a couple other like they banned people from bringing phones into the into the venues like when you go in and pass your ticket you've got to hand in your phone almost like a coat check weird yeah <laughs> I'd be like so sketched. I'd be like, "You creeping in my phone? Looking right? at my tits? Leave that at home." Be like, "No yeah. way, super stash ass." Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the um, shows are opening up. I'm hoping that uh, that we can get to Moncton again sometime soon. Yeah, well, probably when we get stuff going there, we'll probably come knocking on your door. Yeah, yeah. I well, would assume doors yeah. open. Yeah. All right. Rock and roll. <laughs> Well, this awesome. has been fantastic. Yes. Um, thank you for, for agreeing to, to, to do this. I know this is kind of oh. like spur of the moment kind of a thing. I'm, I'm a spur of the moment kind of lady. So I thank you. No, this was great. Thanks for yeah. reaching out for sure. Yeah. I can't wait to hear you guys again and see you guys perform and give you a big hug. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah, coming yeah. soon. <laughs> I Coming can feel it in the air. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna try to put a show together here in Miramichi again. So oh wicked. Yeah, be cool. We'll we'll probably knock on your door too. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Into it. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, thank you. All right. There you have it. Um, thank you so much, Lizanne, for joining me on the podcast and having a chat. Um, talking about all kinds of crazy stuff. Lizanne is uh, such a ball of energy. I had a hard time keeping up with her. To say that I can't wait to play shows again with which, which is which is kind of an understatement. Not so much because I want to play at the show, but more so that I can be in the audience and watch them do their thing. Um, their energy, their performance, just everything. It's like a perfect storm. You know, um, they all play their parts and they all do an amazing job. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, controlled chaos. And uh, that's the kind of shows that I dig. So, yeah, go see them if they uh, get a show booked near you and uh, go support them and buy their records, their vinyls, their T-shirts, any merch that you see. Um, support local music. Okay, so that'll take care of this episode. 
And uh, until the next one, lots of great guests coming up. Uh, we've got the ECMAs, uh, so there might be a delay. Not sure yet, um, but there might be a delay um, from this to the next episode. Uh, so if there is, hang tight. I'll be back. And uh, until the next one, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Bye.